Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to Golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to Golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's Golo.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery, and I saw the Golo commercial, and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at Golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com. Right, there are two things I'd rather be doing this morning. One, not going to work, and two, not going to fucking work. Oh, and I'd also like the long summer evenings back. And to be able to fit into a size 10, but those days are long gone, aren't they, babes? Oh, there I fucking said it. On this episode of The Commercial Break... You know, there's a hundred prestige <laughs> television shows that I should be watching, and my 600-pound life reruns come on, and I'm sitting there all goddamn day! <laughs> Just found two cattle out in the West Range. <laughs> They're covered in jizz. Get your gun, son. We're gonna go. We're gonna go shoot that cock in the balls. I barely had time to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm in a class <laughs> right now teaching women how to make pork roast. Hickory oh. dickory duck, uh, you're gonna suck my cock. <laughs> hey. The next episode of the commercial break starts now. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the commercial break. I am Brian Green. This is my dear friend and beautiful co-host, Kristen Joy Hoadley. Best to you, Chrissy. Oh, wow, best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. How the hell are you? Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this, the commercial break. It's not for everyone, but fact, news, or fiction is guaranteed. You heard it here last. What is your favorite television show from 2022? Oh, God, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> Probably should have prepped you for that I one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just we're sitting here and taking a break uh, in between recording, and Chrissy's watching The Real Housewives. What are you watching? The Real Housewives of Saudi Arabia or <laughs> of something? Of Miami. Of Miami. It's the reboot. And she yells at me for watching TLC all the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> as <laughs> you should not throw stones in a glass parade. <laughs> Another euphemism by Brian. True. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, besides Real Housewives of fucking whatever. Yeah. What are you? What that's did you my, watch? That's that my, was good. That's my trash TV. My yeah. guilty TV. How, how, do you watch it's all addictive. of them? No, I don't watch them all, but I watch a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, you're so bad. There's like two CDs of cities I don't watch. But don't you think, like, okay, not to get into, I mean, I, <laughs> certainly I'm not the guy to be talking about trashy reality television shows because I'm the king of trashy reality <laughs> television shows. But don't you think that that really it's just kind of very formulaic? Like yeah. throw a bunch of catty women Absolutely. that don't even live in the city, nor are they rich, nor are they anything, and then throw them in. Those women in Miami are rich, I'll tell you that. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. So they finally <laughs> found somebody who actually has money. I mean, we've talked about this on the show a million fucking times before. But when Real Housewives of Atlanta has Simon fucking Guabadia yeah. as a character, you know there's that they do zero background checks on these people. Well, zero. let me say, there, yeah, there's certainly a lot of charlatans on there. <laughs> people pretending to be something they're not. Uh, don't they just, don't they just but like, I enjoy, for some reason, I enjoy the drama. I enjoy, it's addictive. The cattiness. Kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like The Bachelor. Yeah. Like, I don't watch The Bachelor, but if I do watch the first one i'm in here's the funny that's thing. The thing same Me thing with too. the housewives yeah if i watch the first one then i'm in then i want to know about them are they really that rich where do they where are they from where are they the, 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 i just yeah i uh, get into it so it's i kind of binge and then stop yeah, i, I would have never thought of pull myself away. as a bachelor kind of guy <laughs> but astrid puts that shit on and then yeah. i get sucked into 30 it's seconds like of it and all of a sudden i'm like well who the fuck is i, I mean i make fun of it the whole time and she <laughs> right. hates that but it's fun for I me. I make fun of them, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't take it seriously. But is there any other television shows behi- that yeah. besides the 75 different versions of Real Housewives right, that you right, watched right. in 2022? Of course, tons of good ones. And now, I mean, damn. We're doing the end of the year of, lists at the beginning of the year. Any, so there you I mean, go. most stuff that I watch on HBO is good, I have to say. Uh, 
also was Ozark. Did that end in 2022? Because I loved I that guess. show. Oh, you didn't I couldn't like get it. into it. No. Really? No, I thought it was I too much it. of a Breaking Bad ripoff. I loved it. And, and, and something about Jason Bateman, I will always think of him as a smug, sarcastic, sardantic yeah, Little well, Arrested guy. Development was fantastic. Arrested, I mean, all of his roles. Arrested mm-hmm. Development, every movie he's ever been in comically, he's always just this kind of like, you know, grumpy, sarcastic <laughs> guy. He's but the straight cute, man. In a cute way. In a cute way. But yeah. then, so try and transfer that into like a <laughs> uh, Brian Cranston type role where oh, no. he's supposed to be some... Well, you and I loved Breaking Bad and that was oh, the OG. So good. Yeah. That was the OG. Well, uh... Uh, Better Call Saul ended. Better Call Saul. But I haven't Saul watched the last so season, so I don't want to hear about it. Don't very, hear about very, it. Okay. very good. Yes. But very answer good. me this. Riddle me this. <laughs> Does <laughs> Brian Cranston make an appearance in Better Call Saul? That's the only thing I want to know. I don't tell me how it is. I feel like he does. He did? But I think, you know, it's from a flashback. Oh, it's a flashback. Mm-hmm. Okay. And did that movie come out too? Remember the movie? There was a movie, and a lot of did people. Did it come out this past year or the year before? I think it was 2021. If it was if it wasn't at the very beginning of 2022, it was 2021, yeah. or maybe even 2020 at this maybe point. I don't know. Three know. years just bled together because <laughs> we did. all sat in our houses doing nothing but watching fucking prestige TV. <laughs> Thank Eating God for Netflix, cooking. HBO, yeah. and Amazon. That's all, and Disney Plus. That's all I got to say. But that that show, which was really about the character that Aaron Paul played, right? Just focused it on what happened afterwards. After. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I did too. I loved it. I got it. A lot of people criticized it because, you know, they didn't say that, whatever they were saying. But a lot of people didn't like it. They thought that it was kind of just like um, like a manufactured extension when it was already perfect the way that it was. And I, I understand. It. But I like knowing that Aaron Paul's character ran off into the to Alaskan, Alaskan woods. woods. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> I really too. wish that Brian Cranston, that... He that his character that Heisenberg that Heisenberg had mm. survived the shooting and mm. that there were additional like a movie to be made or something about it mm. right I really do I just I I, I have withdrawals from that fucking <laughs> television show it was so good and so perfect in every way every time you sat down and at that, that time I did not have a DVR when it first started when it first came on I watched the very first episode the very first time that it came on right and no one else yeah. watched it no one and I'm not being that guy that like yeah. I heard of the band first you know it's yeah I think but you I'm got being me that into guy. it yeah. I think you got me into it so it was it was not until Netflix came along and bought the rights to show the first two seasons and then be a week behind the mm-hmm. third season that it actually gained some steam. And they almost thought about canceling it after season number one. Right. But from the very first episode. It started on AMC, I was good, right? AMC. Yeah. yeah and mm-hmm. it, it did AMC the entire time. But the very first episode, I, I, I was married to my ex-wife when the very first episode came out. Yeah. And I'll never forget how drawn in <laughs> I was. I was like, because you know what I loved? Fucking Malcolm in the Middle. Did you ever watch oh, Malcolm in the Middle with yeah. Brian Cranston? Some. So good. Not a lot. He's so talented he comically. Definitely is. And he's in that other show, The Judge Show or something. I Your keep Honor. To watching that. Your I Honor. I just saw that. that there's a season two coming yeah. out. And you know what else is coming? What? Uh, True Detective season four mm. with Jodie Foster, mm. which I'm a sucker for a Jodie Foster oh. vehicle because she doesn't do many of them. Oh. And when she does, she's good. Yeah. Because ever since Silence of the Lambs, Jodie Foster kills it in almost everything that she's in. What was that? Oh. S- Contact, the space movie? Oh my God, that's one of so my favorite movies. It so is fucking one good. One of my favorite movies. It is the only. I want that to be true. It is the only. So bad. Me too. <laughs> me too. It is the only sci fi movie that I've seen in a long time. Sci fi, strictly sci fi, mm-hmm. that I that I feel like could actually happen and it's really fucking cool. It really right? is. Right? As she goes in this space vehicle, for those of you who haven't seen it, she is a well, tech... She, she's a scientist. She's a scientist. They get they find some signals coming yep. from outer space. She's, she, she picks up on it. Yeah, they decode it. They find out that it's mm-hmm. a, uh, instructions on how to build a structure. They build the structure. She gets picked to go in this structure, which is a big ball that gets dropped in the middle of a thing. You'll have to watch it. Whatever. Go look at... Go look for contact the... Li- the do if you Google or if you go to YouTube and you do contact Jodie Foster goes to space or something along those lines, that 12 minutes of that movie is fucking incredible. Oh, God. It's fucking intense. It really is. It's incredible. Is. Anyway, True Detective is another it's one. It's a great show. 
I was living in the apartment and you and I were doing mm-hmm. a lot of hanging out. And I remember that on my third iPhone, iPhone V3 or whatever it was, <laughs> I got the True Detective app. Somebody gave me yeah. like the HBO app or maybe it was free if you got cable or something like that. So I remember watching that in one fucking day and night so one day and night the whole season and i was like god damn that's good that fucking woody harrelson man he's a fucking master master actor i'll tell you what i really enjoyed this year okay i enjoyed the movie uh about um now i'm forgetting his jeffrey dahmer all right you did like that. the series about jeffrey dahmer mm-hmm. was very good i liked i am shauna ray <laughs> Because I'm just fascinated by this person. Yes, I don't know. I can't. Yeah. I can't get over it. I'm. I'm totally fascinated. Yeah, you, we can't help it. We're fascinated. Do you know that we had that whole conversation about Sean Ray about the like the was that the episode that didn't air? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. There are so many that don't air. I don't know. That's why when we start when we open up these microphones. I never go back. I, I very rarely do I reference old shows because, first of all, if they don't air, I have no idea in which order they're going right. to air because it's just really at the whims <laughs> of Brian. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good episode to put out tomorrow. And we're, some, we're not that far ahead, but some episodes, you're right. They just never air for one reason or another. <laughs> if Chrissy and I turn off the microphone, usually if it's a bad episode, I end it around minute 30 and then you know it's not going anywhere. <laughs> like if we only do 30 minutes, it's just going in the can. But I am Sean Array brought up some like, for me, I've just been thinking about this question the whole time that poor Shauna Ray deserves love, but how can she Everybody have love? Everybody deserves love. I, absolutely. And she deserves to have a romantic relationship. Like not to say deserves, she should be able to have a, a romantic relationship like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But how do you fucking, well, no, it's just gotta be fact? different. It's gotta be different. It's gotta be different. She looks like a 10 year old. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, I think the only way that there might be a chance of something working in my opinion, if I'm her parents, <laughs> mm. Is mm-hmm. uh, knowing that maybe they went to school together, like when they were ten. Yeah, that's true. So for those <laughs> of you that so don't know, she knows they he knows her from when she was actually ten. I totally agree. And the and more that I th- the more that I think about it, the more I think you're right about this. For those of you who don't know, I am Sean Ray is a, a show. Of course, it's on fucking TLC because that's yes. a Brian is a shill for TLC <laughs> and all their stupid reality shows. But I am Sean Ray focuses on a girl who had cancer at a uh, young age, and it stepped on her pituitary gland, messed with her pituitary gland, or something. Thing. So she is literally stuck in stasis. She looks and sounds like she's 10 or 11 years old, but she's really 21 or 22 years old. And so the show focuses on her life and navigating, uh, navigating kind of the like adult life, driving, mm-hmm. getting your own apartment, having your own job. Her parents have completely ill-equipped her for this because they have just shielded her from any kind of anything. But maybe they needed to. I don't know how I yeah. would deal with it. How would you deal with Matias? I would lock him in the basement Being, and give him everything he, he needed. He grows up yeah. to be 22 and you know, he still looks like he's six. You know what I do? I go to Disney World <laughs> and get him in for free for the rest of okay, his life. Well, <laughs> I feel like he's under 10. <laughs> <laughs> You're preparing them. But so this show, uh, I Am Shona Ray, one of the things that they focus on also, uh, especially in the last couple episodes, is her love life. Mm-hmm. And some guy that she met on the internet, he's like this British dude, has all of a sudden you know, come into her life as a romantic possibility. Yeah. And I, I just have to really question the motives. Yeah. And if I'm the parents, I really have to question the motives of a... 20 something year old man who flies across the pond to date my 10 year look 10 year old looking daughter right Crazy. I, i'm in i'm in that boat too. but then i'm walking around i'm literally walking around the mall the other day and this question is like stuck in my head and i'm like <laughs> what would i do if one of my i think i was thinking about it too the other day in I the know. shower it's like such a complicated <laughs> question and i and then i feel so bad for sean array yeah. but the truth is if you want to if you are like just in the normal course of dating, they've showed her going on a couple blind dates and the guys have said no. Yeah, they just said no. Well, and that is a great reaction because you're like, <laughs> I don't think I can, I mean, I, I don't want to be graphic about this, but I don't think I can get physical with a girl who looks and mm-hmm. sounds like she's 10 years old. Yeah. And if you're comfortable with that, you have to question whether or yes. not this person is a troublemaker. Completely. I don't know the guy. He seems perfectly nice on the television show. They don't show any, you know, they don't, I think they kiss once or something like that. But Chrissy said, so I said, what do you do? How do you solve this conundrum? She she is entitled to love and romance just like everybody else, mm-hmm. but she has the body of a 10-year-old and may always have the body of a 10-year-old. And besides some wrinkles on her face, a few like smile lines and stuff, you would never know that that girl was 21, 22. And Chrissy said, 
that you would need to maybe get together with somebody you went to school with. Someone you know, you've you known young. your entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Someone you've known your entire life and you know that personality. They're, they're, they're true intentions. Then. Or you have to get together with someone who has actually had the, Even syn- then, the syndrome. Even then. I know. Weird. But yeah, yeah, listen, the whole situation is weird. I'm, I'm rooting for Shauna Ray and her love life. But at the same time, I'm like, I just. Maybe keep- this was the way to do it was to get on TV. You know what? Maybe so. Mm-hmm. That way, all of the pedophiles can come out of the woodwork. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know that her Instagram is blowing up or oh, whatever. God. If she's even got an Instagram with those parents, she probably does not. Uh, what other television shows did we like? I don't know. I was looking at the end of your list. Let me see if I can pull that up. I like The Crown. I thought The Crown did another Love great the season. Crown. This one is a little slower than most, but uh, I did enjoy The Crown. I didn't get a chance to watch any of those. You know, the, here's the thing about having kids, too. Kids and the stupid fucking podcast and a stupid fucking job <laughs> is that I have zero time to watch anything. So what I end up watching is a lot of reruns of shows that I've already seen or because it's just I can fall asleep during them and I don't give a shit. Or... I pick like short British sitcoms. And you know which one I found that I really like? There's two of them. It's not British, actually. It's Irish. Bridget and Iman oh, on okay. Amazon. You can watch. It's fr- it's uh, free V is like a... Yeah, yeah okay. I've seen that. So free V is being piped in through they Amazon. Are, yeah. This Irish sitcom, this 30-minute television show, this comedy show called Bridget and Iman is one of the funniest fucking shows I have ever seen in my entire <laughs> I love life. Funny and shows. while you may have to watch it with the subtitles on because they have thick Irish accents, it's it's based on a couple that lives in the um in in Ireland in the eighties. And Chris I'm writing it in the notebook. Write what it down. The, what is the name? Bridget and Iman. Uh, Iman is spelled E A M O N. You gotta watch this show. Watch the first two episodes and tell me you didn't fucking laugh out loud at least sixty times. And then another show I wanted to shout out was Aftertaste on Amazon, which is an Australian show about a chef who gets canceled, uh, cancel culture, and then he moves back in with his niece or something like that. My God, speaking of chefs. So last night, Jeff and I watched a show on HBO and it was a doozy. What show was that? The Menu. Is that the movie? It's called The Menu. We talked about this. Is that the one where they're like kill each other and... Okay, don't give don't give away the ending. Got on my list, but it's so good. I loved it. Jeff was a little (laughs) rattled by it, but I loved it because it's a it's also a very uh, cynical look at the food world. Oh, good! I love that. The foodies and the different people and like the tech bros that have to go to the best restaurants because it's supposed to be the best restaurant in the The world. Yeah, you know the Coke Bros. Yeah, yeah. You know they had a fascinating television show. I think it was on Bravo for a hot minute where. Uh, I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but it was a it's a very famous restaurant in New York and was considered the best one of the best restaurants in the world. Mm -hmm. And they did a total like refurbishment of the place. And the cameras followed them as they re- oh, shut down, cool. then reopened the restaurant in a new way. I like And this. all the things that went into it. At the end of the day, my heart is always going to be with the restaurant industry. I think I'm always going to be like a service guy yeah. at the end. You know, we were talking about like... Um, we were saying on, on an episode, I don't know when it's going to air, but we said on an episode, uh, we were talking about how Astrid often says, Brian, go give him the Brian look, mm-hmm. which she means is sometimes the Brian charm can bring about uh, nice things. Riches like, and gold. Yeah, riches and gold. <laughs> 70 inch <laughs> cocks and tight vaginas. Why Brian 3000? Yeah. Why Brian 3000? <laughs> uh, and I think that I understand a little bit why... I can communicate in that way. And I believe it has to do with the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. Because when you you are a waiter and a bartender, you get really attuned at picking up somebody's momentary attitude, where they're at, their perspective. You get really quick at putting yourself in someone else's shoes and kind of intuitively understanding what they may need out of an interaction with somebody. Well, and also with sales. I mean, I know being Same in thing. advertising sales, yeah, yeah, you have to adapt to a lot of different people's personalities. Yeah, I mean, unless you're like <laughs> doing the clear channel boiler room bullshit. Call, 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 call. Yeah. How many calls did you get in? Call now, no, call now, call a, now. That was always more relationship oh, sales. My God. And you have to really get to know somebody well, and yeah. see what's important to them. In most re- in most sales jobs, the ability to build a quick relationship and some mm-hmm. trust is, is tantamount. And 
you know, if you're selling widgets like transactionally online, you don't need that. Yeah. But if you're selling any kind of consultative sales and advertising is one of those things. Mm-hmm. But I'm really a restaurant guy at heart. So anytime that yeah. I see these restaurant based shows, shows uh, I, love them I have to pick up on them. And Aftertaste was such a good show. And I know that it was like critically acclaimed in Australia. It runs on their on their television stations before it does over here. Okay. Um, and then it comes over to Amazon. So season two is coming out and I'm super excited about that. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that in all the, so they're saying that the end of Presti, Prestige TV is yeah, here. Yeah, I was, I was seeing that. The companies are going to start scaling back on the, and listen, I, I get it. I totally understand this. You know, uh, how many more television shows about severance 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 was a good one i never watched severance i didn't i'll have to get into it you at did. some point you, wait, we talked about it severance on on apple oh severance yes yeah. yes 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 <laughs> I, for some reason i thought you were talking about that show that ever no that's no. What, billions or whatever that show is. oh i like that show too okay severance is so fucking good it's really and good. in season two they have yeah. a bunch of special guest stars that I'm they're so they're filming it right now i can't wait that was mm-hmm. such a good such an original concept yeah um, different yeah, and there was apparently a television show in the '70s that did a very like a oh. similar takeoff on it, mm-hmm. and it's so good. Watch Severance if you haven't on Apple TV. The Morning Show the was morning a great show. one. Love that one. The Morning Show was wonderful. I was going through these Yellowstone. Nah. I, I look. I waited four seasons in until to watch Yellowstone. I was like, eh. But everybody's talking about it. Let me yeah. just see what it's about. Boom, addicted. You were hooked. Yeah, really. And Jeff was too. Really, we love it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'll give it a try. I'm afraid to get sucked into Yellowstone. You, um, you know what else? What other show was? Uh, the Amazon, the Amazon show. Oh my god, I'm not. I'm now. I'm gonna three um, three pines. Not three pines. The one about the hole in the ground. Did you see that one? Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? And yes, I loved oh, that. Oh, it was so what, fucking it got good. Canceled. It got canceled. Yes, no. Where they, they would go to another world? Yeah, what? Where they go to another world when they step down into the hole? They step into the hole and they get transported in time. Yeah. 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 Yes. It was. Who so was good. the star of that? Oh, What's it was his name? Everybody. Um, I, I not think, Javier Bardem, but the other guy that was in. I stumbled upon that show and I was like, oh why, my why isn't God, this one being so touted? Fucking good. It was. It was all over Amazon. But I love. Ah, damn it. I really wanted to see what happened in season two. I know. He was in uh, No Country for Old Men. One of my favorite movies, but I can't remember the fucking guy's name. I know, and I can't Um, remember the name of the show. Such a handsome dude, too. Like, he's like Uh an old, he's like one of those old guys that's handsome. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. He's like a Harrison Ford type. He keeps getting better. Look it, and I get up there! God damn it. That was a great show. (laughs) Such a great show. I saw it. I watched it. I loved it. Loved Loved, it. Loved loved it. it. Yeah. Um, I'm watching Jack Ryan right now, season three. I've gotten into that. You know, it's so, it's so stereotypical. That's the thing. Like, you know, action. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's something that about... Good. Like, I like watching... Uh, what's his name? Play Jack Ryan. Uh, you know, the guy from The Office. Whatever his name is. Um, I like watching him, him play that. You know, so they're saying that's the end of Prestige TV. Everyone's going to start scaling back on spending. I totally get it. There's a yep. lot of television shows, and you just can't get to all of them. And these it's streaming tough. services have to start making money, or they're going to go away. <laughs> I know. And none of them are making money. None of them are making money. Netflix is losing money. Amazon can afford to lose money. They'll probably stick around for a long time. Uh, Disney is just Disney, but they're losing a shit ton of money also. Yeah, I know. It's getting too diluted. It's You can't watch all of it. No. And so therefore, everything, instead of getting a major audience for the really good shows, we're getting pretty good shows and it's just so spaced out mm-hmm. that you you don't know what to watch. You have no idea what to watch. I always it's feel tough. like no matter what I start watching, I'm missing out on six other things. I agree. I have that a uh, feeling too, and that's why I go straight to Housewives yeah. <laughs> and zone You're out. Kind of me too. It's kind of it's kind of <laughs> like, like I know what to okay. expect on TLC. <laughs> exactly. I got this. I know this. I got this. <laughs> right. It's going to be some shitty reality show that I don't have to get that emotionally <laughs> right. involved in, yeah. and I can yell at the screen. If I have right? to cut it off, I cut it off. Yeah, like, it's it's okay. You know, there's a hundred prestige <laughs> television shows that I should be watching and my 600 pound life reruns come on and I'm sitting there all goddamn day. <laughs> I'm determined to find this Amazon one. Okay. Keep go, keep, keep so uh, is it called like the uh, the horizon or the event or it something like so that? Good. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I highly yeah. recommend it to everybody. Oh my I'm God. So happy you saw so it too. Good. We so look on your watch it. again. Maybe that's. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or Amazon you? originals. Okay. I'll, I'll keep talking while you do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So when they say the end, of, but, but you know, we it wasn't too long ago when there were just a few television stations that could even afford to do these kind of television show, television programs right 
And it was the way that they did it was they went around, people would pitch them television shows, or they would be at the upfronts and they would see television shows that had already been produced, a pilot or whatever. And they would only green light a few. And those television shows would then go on air for one, two, three, three episodes. And if they didn't find an audience, they were done for. They were canceled. And in the 90s, this happened left and right. There are so many television shows in the 90s and early 2000s. Night Sky. Oh, no, I wasn't. That's not what I'm thinking oh. of. I'm not thinking of Night Sky. Okay. This was Sissy Spacek. I love her. Um, and J.K. Simmons. Oh, is that the one that got... Is that the one that got uh, That's canceled? That's the one that got canceled, so maybe yours is still going. I'm thinking I about... I Night Sky, though. It was so good. Oh, I saw... Have you seen The Outlaws? Oh. The Outlaws was so good. Um, Cla- All the Amazon originals? Yeah. Now, I know this guy is just taking a beating right now because he said some really, really nasty stuff about Meghan Markle, but Jeremy Clarkson, who the guy who did the the top gear top racer top gear out in the uk the incredibly popular show okay. he was one of the original guys who did that he was a top gear star and he did something called jeremy clarkson's farm and it's about him buying a farm and what it takes to get that farm going it is one of the fucking it's so sincere but so funny at the same time okay. because he's really trying to make it work and even though he's a climate change denier he gets into like you know <laughs> making sure he's protecting the wetlands and all this stuff he's kind of like leans right but he jokes left it's kind of it's it's interesting how okay. he straddles that but Clarkson's farm was really good too um I wish yeah we got to find this cuz I really want to tell people to watch this this television show and um God, I'm scrolling through and I saw, have you seen that Val movie about Val Kilmer? No. Current, it's like him currently. Really? Or in the past few years. But you know, okay. he had, he had a uh, throat, like a, was it cancer? Yeah. I think he had throat cancer. Yeah. yeah and it talks about, it, it's a, gr- it's a great movie. It's a great movie. I highly recommend it. Val. Yeah. It's kind of sad what happened to Val, Val Kilmer. Yeah, but actually. he's making it. He's, he's doing it. But is he? His son is the one who does the, the, the movie and interviews him. Josh Brolin is who I'm thinking oh, of. Good old Josh, Josh Brolin. Brolin. He Have you seen? Okay, man. so Outer Range is the name of the show. Hmm. Have you seen Outer Range? No. Okay, Outer Range is the show. Watch this show, Chrissy. Tell me you don't love this show. Okay. Watch Outer Range. So back in the 90s and the early 2000s, we only had a few television stations that could afford to put on any kind of television show whatsoever. Sitcom, drama, melodrama. And then reality television is like peak reality TV is like 2005, 2006, when really actors and actresses got, got, got replaced by regular people doing regular things. Regular idiots like Brian on The Real World trying to do <laughs> bullshit. So I started Googling because I was just fascinated by this. I started Googling uh, television shows in the 90s and 2000s that only lasted for a couple of episodes, oh, right? Because I okay. wanted to see if I had ever seen any of these shows yeah. and how bad they were or how good they were. Like, could we have had an extra season? And do you know what I came upon? What? You're never going to... I, I, If you've seen this, I'm going to be so, so incredibly surprised. Um, here, let me... Oh, my God. If that's what this show is about, Outer Range, then you're, you would love... You would love uh, Yellowstone. Would I? Well, a rancher fighting for his no, land no, no, and no. Family. This is completely okay, different. Okay. Completely different. He finds literally oh, okay. finds a hole a in the ground hole. on his ranch. Glory. And <laughs> he's have one big cock. <laughs> what if it was a hole in the ranch and just a big penis came out and jizzed on you every time yeah, you got close to it? That would be incredible. <laughs> it would be all over TLC. Uh, I'm gonna we sh- <laughs> listen. Uh, two Literally. years ago, we probably got, could have got this concept green lighted. <laughs> the glory hole. <laughs> a rancher fights for his family. The big penis spews sticky semen all over. <laughs> oh my God. Just found two cattle out in the West Range. <laughs> They're covered in jizz. Get your gun, son. We're going to go. We're going to go shoot that cock in the balls. <laughs> oh my God. What a brilliant television show. Hello, all my friends out there in the podcast universe. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Commercial Break. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or content ideas, send them to 1-855-TCB-8383. Toll free from anywhere in the world, 855-TCB-8383. Make sure to visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the commercial break. Full episodes air a few days after they do here on the audio feed and starting in season four the same day. You can go to 
the TCB Podcast website at tcbpodcast.com. Hear all the audio and watch all the video. You can also contact us all from tcbpodcast.com. Please follow us at The Commercial Break on Instagram and feel free to use our specialized URLs and or codes when you hear them on the commercials. Speaking of those sponsors, let's take a moment, hear from them, and we'll be back to this episode of The Commercial Break. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You could turn $10 into $250. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/fan and use code FAN. That's code FAN at prizepicks.com/fan. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. So, Chrissy, I was trolling on the internet. As you do. As I do. Listen, my wife told me to do a show about television shows, and so I'm doing a show about television shows, mainly <laughs> okay. to satisfy my wife, because she thinks we're boring otherwise. So. Okay. And she's not the only one, by the way. <laughs> okay, if you can guess this show without before the title, I'm going to be surprised. You can guess this show by the soundtrack, by the uh, opening song. I swear to God, I'll give you a 5% raise. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't guess it because I saw this. Yeah, the, because the title yeah. came up right away? <laughs> Very quickly. Okay. The name of the show is Out of This World, and it ran for just a couple of episodes. And now let me give you the premise of the show. Before, Look at this. This is classic, <laughs> classic. 90s TV. This is like sitcom in a studio, yep. fake laughing and everything. This is basically about <laughs> a girl whose dad has passed, and he turns into a crystal-like uh, I don't know, trinket, like an ashtray <laughs> that talks to her, and she has the ability to stop time by putting her fingers together, oh. right? Do you remember I the... I like I remember the time stopping Yeah, the fingers. time stopping thing. That's what got me, too. I couldn't remember <laughs> until she started stopping time, but this show is so fucking cheese nut, Chrissy. We'll listen to a few minutes of it, because I think it's of just... Of course they're going to start off in a kitchen. They're going to start off... Oh, They're going to oh. start off at a diner that just so happens to be the same diner <laughs> That the guys from, uh, that the kids from uh, Zach and uh, Kelly. 90210. And, no, 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 no. Oh. Uh, yes, also the Peach Pit. It also oh, okay. is from. Yeah, what? God. Oh, God damn it. Why is my brain not working today? Where <laughs> is Zach from? <laughs> Save by the bell. Save by the bell. Save by the bell. Thank you. <laughs> the, t- the name of the title of the episode is Hex Angels. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> Listen to that music. I'm going to use dun, that for our dun, transitions. Dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I like that. Don't you think that? Don't you think that's it? Let's listen to it one more time. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I love it. Two Miracle Burgers coming up. <laughs> Why are they called Miracle Burgers? Because it's a miracle if they ever get here. <laughs> <laughs> Insert laugh track here. <laughs> There's the wacky zany oh, server coming on out of the peach yeah, pit. He just fell with a yeah. tray. Here you are, girls. Congratulations, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> just a little joke. I won't get the real burgers. Whoa. All of oh. these shows. Say, uh, <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug, kids. What you're not seeing is that there's like a waiter that comes out of the diner thing and he's like making all these crazy movements and clicking his teeth and yeah. <laughs> honk honk. Let me feel your tits. <laughs> Don't in Tokyo. <laughs> it's so bad that it's funny because it this and this is so formulaic. Every show in the nineties, Saved by the Bell, you name them, a thousand of them. They all have the mm. same thing. There's the zany diner guy. And then there's the girls who I can guarantee you, even though I have not seen this whole episode, I can guarantee you are going to fawn over some cute boy that just came to town, right? Probably. Need the new boy? The new boy in town. Hex Angels. He's in the Hex Angels. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I already had a big lunch. Yeah, you know, what do you always eat before you come to the goody goody? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> well, I don't have time to eat anyways. Why not? Well, I signed up for that high school tutorial program. I'm tutoring a kid in remedial English. 
In fact, he's supposed to meet me here, and then we're going to head over to the library. Easy. I barely had time to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm in a class right now <laughs> teaching women how to make pork roast. I can't believe you'd rather help an educationally starved young man get his diploma than waste your time here with me. What are the priorities? Well, who is this kid anyway? I don't know. See, I have his name right here. I feel like I went to high school plays that were acted better than this. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wonder why these two girls haven't. Yeah, it's not very good. I think they missed out on the prestige TV uh, gangbusters. You know how every actor in the world got a job because of prestige TV? Oh, okay. These two I haven't seen again. Okay. His name's Bradford Dillingworth III. Hey, that's a classy name. Yeah. Dillingworth. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Dillingworth. Name that has an air of new clothes and old money. Hey, which one of you is Evie Garland? She is. Is that the fawn of the, f- the show? Hey. <laughs> which one hey. of you is? Which one of you stits am I touching today? <laughs> hey, I got a note from the uh, gym teacher. Said, come in here and fuck this young lady. Who is that? What is this, Andrew Dice Clay? <laughs> yes, that's what it is. It's Andrew Dice Clay. He even has the sunglasses and the uh, the, the bandana, bandana and the leather jacket. jacket. And look at him. He's got a pair of handcuffs <laughs> around his dick. That's crazy. That's crazy. YouTube.com slash the commercial break. You got to see this. He literally, like, you know, guys in the 90s would have the chains James. around their wallet. <laughs> He's, gonna... He's got handcuffs around his dick. <laughs> that's pretty suggestive. Dealing worth the dirt. Yep, he's got an air, all right. But, uh, all my friends call me Moose. Excuse me, Moose. But aren't you a little Hickory old? dickory duck, uh, you're gonna suck my cock. <laughs> hey. To be in high school? Yeah, well, I uh, took a couple of years off to visit abroad. Oh, you traveled in Europe? No, I was visiting abroad. Cute chick down in Pasadena. <laughs> So I'm uh, 27 years old, and uh, they got me this hot tutor. Uh, every year around spring, I come and get another hot tutor. Next up, 21 Jump Street. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I feel like these two shows have interloped. It's time we headed for the library? Yeah, we all better get going. My Harley's double park. Oh, your Harley, great. Let's... We better get going. Uh, you think this Viagra lasts forever? Come on, let's go. <laughs> But now they're back at her house. Donna, close your eyes. Are they closed? Yes, they're closed. <laughs> okay, open your eyes. Well, do I look bad or what? Yeah, I'd say you look very bad. Now, I'm wearing this because I'm setting up a special police unit to investigate disreputable businesses in our town. I'd start with- Is it just me or does this guy sound drunk? Yeah. He sounds drunk, doesn't he? The actor, like the actual actor, sounds drunk. <laughs> this, 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 my my life's career, my life's work has ended right here, and out of this world. A special police unit to investigate disreputable businesses in our town. I'd start with the store that sold you this suit. Now, tonight I'm going to a club called Crickets Going. No, oh. <laughs> I thought you had the crickets going. Nope. <laughs> This no, time it wasn't show. me. Yeah, that's the show. It's the show. They're adding in cricket sound effects in the middle of the day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> girls, girls, girls. Dozens of scantily clad starlets cavorting on tabletops. At least I hope so. Hey, guys. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Your father's going to the strip club again. <laughs> undercover. Yeah, undercover work. <laughs> <laughs> Your father needs dollar bills. Do you have any, honey? Nothing we can talk about with you in the room. In fact, we shouldn't even talk about it with me in the room. Hey, maybe I'll have to frisk a showgirl. I mean, is that the dad? I don't know who it is. is it, no, the dad is in the box. Oh, okay. The dad is in the magic <laughs> ashtray. How'd the tutoring go? Great. You know, honey, I am really proud of you. Giving up your afternoons to tutor a needy student. What's the young man's name? Moose. Ah, Moose. Moose? Yeah, you know, at first I thought he'd be kind of slow. After all, he is 22, has tattoos all over his body, and drives a Harley as big as Montana. Evie? No, Mom. He's a really bright and sensitive guy. Okay, if you say so. In spite of his prison record. His prison record? <laughs> so, so cliche. Yeah, 
<laughs> just, I just want to point out, Evie is in high school, and she's going to probably go for the guy who's 22 years old. Yeah, she's yeah. nonchalantly, nonchalantly telling, her, telling her mom she's 22 years old, mm-hmm. and he's got a bike she likes to sit on. <laughs> I saw you today. Oh, this is the boyfriend coming in. That's her boyfriend? That's her boyfriend. Okay. Riding on the back of Moose Dillingworth's motorcycle? You rode on the back of a motorcycle? No, I was not riding on the back of a motorcycle. Oh, thank heavens. I was up front in his lap. You know, the more I hear about this, the le- <laughs> He told me that's where you're supposed to go. <laughs> we then visited some bar called the Glory Hole. Yes, I want to hear about this. So I'm going in the kitchen now because I trust you, dear. I raised you right. You have a good head on your shoulders. You're very level-headed. Yes, I know you wouldn't do anything stupid like that. So what were you doing with Moose anyway? Chris, Moose and I were participating in an afternoon tutorial program. You would let him see your tutorial? I was showing him. I was. Sh- He's getting a little slow in sex ed. This is his fourth time in high school. We had to show him. Reels? Chris, tutorial means I was helping him study. I oh, I thought you said tutorials. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Sounds like Chris needs a tutorial. Yeah, Chris is Chris plays a real lug nut. Yeah. You know, it's it, again. You take a he's caricature. Got the blonde hair, like coiffed yeah, he's up. Total surfer boy. He's got the sh- he's got the button down <laughs> shirt on without the sleeves rolled up, tucked in with a brown belt and high rise jeans. Yep. That. <laughs> Look, I swear to you, absolutely nothing, nothing was going on between us. Hi, Evie. Hi, Evie. I just wanted to tell you I forgot to wear a condom. I'll talk to you later. (laughs) Marry me. What? (laughs) What? I said I want to marry you. You got a problem with that? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, I do have a problem with that. And if Evie wasn't holding me back... Evie, hold me back. (laughs) You're lucky, pal. So am I. Look, Evie, I know this is awful sudden and everything. Awfully sudden. But Moose, I'm sitting I don't next know. to you in the library today. Watching you da- sitting sitting there in the library with these handcuffs around my cock. I realized <laughs> how much I'm in love with you. With these handcuffs on my cock and this painted on mustache and I a little know. bit too much bronzer. <laughs> he looks sad. like bad. Remember the George Michael it's video? I can't remember the video, but there was a George Michael video way back in, you know, when, oh, when MTV right. was a thing. And they dressed up the, like, George Michael had the famous five o'clock shadow. Yeah. And then they had supermodels that also had the five o'clock shadow. Like, they mm-hmm. were dressed up as men. Mm-hmm. This was this what this guy looks like. He looks like a supermodel <laughs> dressed up like a man. Like your fingers trip through the Dewey Dust Summer system. Oh. <laughs> I knew you was the only one for me. I knew you were the only one for me. But really, I didn't understand. You felt that way, too. No, 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 Moose, you don't understand. Look. Oh, well, I, was... I gotta go home now and, uh, and study and make you proud of me. <gasps> Gee, after we're married, this will be my house. Bring out the dad and the Mom! ashtray. Yeah, now you got to bring out the <laughs> ashtray and you got to talk to your dad about You got to talk to your space dad about what to do about the incredibly creepy 22 year old that just came into your life and wants to press your Dewey Decimal Systems. Can you come out here a minute? I really need to talk to you. I'm sorry, dear. I can't right now. I'm busy fainting. <laughs> I can't believe these. I can't believe this show didn't take off. I know. It's so hard. I think I'll have the chocolate mousse, please. I never want to hear the word moose again as long as I live. The guys driving me crazy. What's this? Oh, it's a greeting card moose sent me. I want you close. I want you near. Cause we go together like jerky and beer. <laughs> What's the picture? I want you close. I want you near because we go together like jerky and beer. Beer, This is a high school student we're talking Mm, about. Profound. (laughs) Front. Oh, socket wrenches against the sunset. (laughs) Well, Hallmark's got nothing to worry about. Do you know that he called me three times this morning? First, he called to find out if I slept okay. Then he called to find out if I woke up okay. Then he called to find out if he was calling too much. <laughs> Which one of you is Evie Garland? She, she is. is. Uh oh, here comes oh. the mad girlfriend. It's uh, like a uh, grease. Yeah, this is like, there's a. Is that they Rizzo? Have, uh, what's that? Is that like Rizzo? Yeah, Rizzo. <laughs> they have a problem in this town with really rowdy bikers. 
And if that police officer dad <laughs> would just get on it, if he would get out of the strip club and sober up a little bit, maybe he could get rid of the motorcycle gang that's terrorizing his daughter. <laughs> I'm Moose's old lady. You're Moose's mother? Gosh, you look so young and perky. I'm Moose's girlfriend, Velma. Velma LaRue. Velma, Velma LaRue. LaRue. <laughs> Vulva LaRue. Uh. And my boyfriend's Moosecock. <laughs> and I heard you two are doing the Dewey Decimal System together. Pleased to meet you. You know, Blondie, last year some chick tried to steal my moosey away from me. Really? Oh, oh, I'd like to meet the girl foolish enough to try something like that. Sure, check Central Hospital. I guess she can have visitors by now. You see these tattoos, Blondie? This V stands for Velma. Wow. Oh, man, that's dedication. Who is storyboarding this out? <laughs> I'd like to vote that Prestige TV doesn't slow down and we continue to put out shows like this. This is. There's a there's a V and there's an M. There's a V on and there's each an M. Hand yes. Of Velma. What do you think the V if you if you didn't know their names what would the V stand for? Well, she just said Velma. Yeah. And Moose and Yeah. It. I know it. And this M stands for Moose. <laughs> what about the skull and crossbones? That's a birthmark. Oh. You know what happens when something comes between Velma and Moose? You guys sit down and work things out calmly. We get into a polyamorous relationship that respects everybody's boundaries and personal sexual likes and dislikes. Bitch. This happens. Just stay away from him, Blondie, or else. Or else what? Lindsay! Or else this! Uh-oh, she just threw the, she threw the, she zany threw the zany uh, waiter across, across the, the room. room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I've seen a couple fights in my life, and they usually don't target someone else. Like, it's not like they're angry at one person and then turn around and show you what they're going to do to you with another person. <laughs> And again, if that police officer would sober up and get out of the lap dancing mode that he's in, then maybe he could stop some of this crime going on. I, I think she broke my buns. <laughs> he meant butt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we never I, got to see the dad. I know, we I'm never got to see the dad. dad. But would you like to do a part two? Yes. Okay, we'll do a part two. We'll get right into it. We just got a couple more episodes left on season number three, and thank God, we need a break. Yes, we do. <laughs> we need a break. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We need, You know what we need? We just need a little bit more time to focus on the commercial break. Yes, we that's do. That's what we need, and that's what we're getting in that's season number four. Mm-hmm. It's all commercial break all the time here at the Green and Hoadley household. <laughs> Not together. Hey, you better wash out, and my moose knuckles going to hit on your moose knuckles. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not even going to say it Look at my handcuff dicks And tell me I'm not serious <laughs> Alright well uh, I wanted to say this Thank you everybody for listening to the commercial yes. break In season thank number you, three you. This has been a year of explosive growth From five to seven lots listeners of gratitude. Yeah lots of gratitude Chrissy and I are extremely grateful for all of the kind words that you've sent us, all of the wonderful reviews, visiting our sponsors, and most importantly, listening to the show. And we want to know how we can do it better. Or if you have any concerns that you'd like addressed, uh, we probably won't answer you, but you're welcome to send them to 855-TCB-8383. That's 1-855-TCB-8383. You can text, you can leave a voicemail. We will respond. No spam here. We don't put you in a database. None of that shit. It goes straight to one of our phones, and we will respond. You can also go to tcbpodcast.com. You can listen to all of the audio. You can watch all the video, and you can contact us there by hitting the Contact Us button and send us an email. If you would like a 21 EPM sticker, we're sending them out in early February, the beginning of Season 4, so please write in with your name, your actual address, and make sure you tell us you want a 21 EPM sticker because you just write me with your address. I'm going to do nothing with it. It's <laughs> I just uh, there's, I don't know what to do. And I've gotten a couple of those. They don't put a name. They just put the address. Uh, and I'm like, what is this all about? <laughs> yeah, uh, person. Yeah, ask. I need something. <laughs> tell me who you are. You right, neighbor. Yeah. Okay. And so that's a that's a good <laughs> reminder. Yeah. If you sent me in your address, make sure to send me in your name too. <laughs> 
YouTube.com slash The Commercial Break at The Commercial Break on Instagram for season four. We're going to post once. Okay, Chrissy, that's all I can do today. I think so. I love you. I love you. A best to you. Best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I always say, we do say, and we must say, goodbye. goodbye.